Hello and welcome to Growing People. I'm John Losey and today we are fortunate enough to have Lance Wilcox here who is somebody who I've uh, known for quite a while and grown to love. We have discovered many, many things about how people really learn and grow. So Lance, welcome. Well, thank you, John, and I love you too. Tell me a little bit about the difference, similarities and differences between creating technical training, uh, sales training stuff, and creating leadership training. Yeah, I think the, well, first of all, I didn't really know much about leadership training when I started working with John. This guy actually taught me a lot. And, and you really did because I, you know, with sales training, there are, there was a certain amount of best practices, for example. And so really you would just reuse those over and over and over again. So, uh, you know, certainly when I got into leadership training, it was a new world. Uh, the other thing about it is that you know, sales training can, it tends to be fairly process focused, right? There's a certain sales process. Now, we didn't get too deep into that because most of the dealerships want to have their own processes, but they, they all tend to be similar anyway. So you design around that. Now in leadership, it's not really about a process. It's really about, really a lot of it's about behaviors. And that's, it's a lot different to train that. It's, it's, you know, the classic example, right, in, 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 in training, at least what I'd heard as I started to learn it is, right, first you, you describe what needs to be done, then you model it or demonstrate it, then you have them do it, and then you give them some feedback and have them do it again, right? So if you're teaching someone how to program, I would say a VCR, we don't use them anymore, but, you know, use a, you know, iPad, for example, you would maybe, you know, describe the process, then you would demonstrate it, you'd give it to them, they would do it, you'd give them some feedback if they made a mistake, and then they'd do it again. Well, that's a lot tougher with leadership, right? I mean, uh, we'll talk about coaching, I think, in a moment, but for the most part, again, a lot of the leadership is in a, well, here's how to deliver an inspirational speech, right? We're going to give you five steps, and <laughs> I'm going to give you an inspirational speech, then you have to get up and deliver one. It's usually a lot more complex than that. Is that why some of, sometimes like role plays are really challenging in leadership programs where they can be really effective in sales or process? Yeah, totally, totally, because it's, it's, it's pretty... I mean, nobody likes to in role plays, even salespeople. I mean, they hate it. But it's one thing if you're going to, uh, you know, do demonstrate, talk about the features of a car, for example. I can, uh, you know, I can role play that because honestly, I'm going to be doing that scenario over and over and over again. It's I think they use the concept of it. That's a near transfer. In other words, I'm being taught it in class, and then I'm going to transfer it to the sales floor. But it's probably going to be pretty similar. My walk around. Now, how is that different with leadership? Well. I, I think it's different. <laughs> First of all, I think a lot of leadership programs do try to teach it that way. And it's, you often get this paint by number. In fact, I remember, John, you remember when we started and we were, uh, we were redoing the curriculum that we had actually purchased for supervisors. And there was, and I remember this one piece of curriculum had, it, it like had a different model for every kind of interaction a manager would typically do. So you know, there was a coaching model, then there was a model for having team meetings, and then there was a model for you know, performance, and then yeah. a model for feedback. And, and you know, it was like five or six or seven different ones. And, and they, a, a different kind of uh, a job aid that they'd exactly. sell for each one. Right. Oh, exactly. And, you know, it, it seemed good. I mean, it, because it was, you know, I think people liked it because, you know, you came away with a big binder and you felt like you had actually, uh, you know, learned something and taken something with you. The problem is that nobody could remember the four or five or six different models and how and when to apply them. So honestly, it wasn't very useful. And, and we'd go out and visit people in the field and we'd see the binders <laughs> up at their desk or in their office and just covered in dust and they yeah, hadn't yeah. cracked them in a while. Right, exactly. So.